Hi everyone. Hello again. In the finished mystery, we're on page 24 and we're covering these verses, which is Revelation chapters 2, 2 to 4. I know your words, your toil, and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles, and are not, and found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. So first of all, it's addressed to a specific church, right? This is the church, church of Ephesus is being described and mm -hmm. applauded, but also criticized in at least one aspect. And unless mm -hmm. you get that straight, you might get lost in the fog of what they say next. Yeah. Because they're not going to deal with the fact that Christ is addressing one church at one particular time, 95 yeah. AD. Because they've already introduced the idea that these seven churches are ages, periods of time in church history. Yeah. So they just bypass any discussion of the actual congregation in Ephesus. Yeah, and then they spend a page and a half now, actually more closer to two pages, mm -hmm. describing something that is not at all dealt with in the text we just read, namely the situation of the church in Ephesus. 95 AD, that mm -hmm. the next page and a half is jumping around from scripture to scripture all over the New Testament. None of them in Ephesus, but a number of other congregations in the early church period, but none of them are directed to Ephesus. So we won't bother to read all the details, because you could bog down in all the details of interpretation, yeah. or just suffice it to say for now that this jumping around, this, this humpty hopscotch all over the New yeah. Testament is not doing justice to what Christ is saying to one church. But we will give you some samples of, of what they actually say this is about. Yeah, here's a few highlights. Yeah, so uh, for example, in the portion of scripture that said, and they, and thy labor, okay, they, they say, uh, considered as betrayers of the Jewish faith, living in the midst of the heathen idolatry, without railways, steamships, automobiles, bicycles, telegraphs, telephones, uh, printing, po uh, postal service, electricity, gas, or kerosene, in the midst of densest ignorance and basest morals, the early church traversed the seas and lands of the known world, uh, braving floggings, stonings, hunger, thirst, cold, nakedness, and martyrdom, that they might tell the good news of the coming kingdom. What's wrong with this? Well, well, well first I don't of know all, why introduce all those things that modern world has? I don't know. What's well, the point it, but of that? it's all to make the the point that these early Christians did a marvelous job. Yes, they did, mm -hmm. but they weren't they weren't the ones traveling all over the Roman Empire. You've misrepresented yeah. the situation of yeah. the early church, even though you think that's what this text is about. One epoch of forty years, you've misrepresented it because who was actually moving around in the Roman Empire for the most part, except for wealthy people, of course, who could afford to travel. The apostles on missionary. Yeah. trips, but the missionary not the apostle. average Christian who's yeah. not traveling around. And that ending, they might that they might tell the good news of the coming kingdom. There's not a single evidence in the book of Acts that the message of even of the apostles and their helpers mm -hmm. was about the kingdom. They, in yeah. the 22 recorded messages of the apostles and their helpers in Acts, not once do they even reference the kingdom. They usually say the good news of Christ the good news of Jesus. That's what you're going to find a lot of in, in those texts. The, the second sample we'll, we'll give you is the, the portion that uh, has to do with the scripture that said, them which call themselves apostles and are not, and hath found them liars. They say, giving out that himself was some great one, like the clergy of other times, Simon Magnus, Magus, Magus sorry, Magus, uh, sought also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may 
received the Holy Spirit, but learned that he had neither part nor lot in this matter, because his heart was not right in the sight of God. Also there were certain men which came down from Judea, the false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ in Corinth, uh, Hymenaeus and Alexander, uh, Philetus, those who would pervert the gospel of Christ, those who would pervert, oh no, I said that already, the gospel of Christ in Galatia, uh, I can never say their names, uh, Phagellus and Hormogenes, Hormogenes, Fine. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Okay, so... Uh, Where are all these texts from? Everywhere, but Ephesians. So you've already decided this is about a period of 40, approximately 40 years of the apostolic ministry, mm -hmm. as detailed in Acts and a few of the epistles. You've already decided that. So now everything you have to find is from there. Yeah. So, so even though you say that the seven churches are really seven prophetic periods in history, you're going back in time. You're writing history at this point, mm -hmm. not prophecy, because... The book, the book of Revelation is written around the year 95 after all this has happened. Yeah. But it's about a situation that then existed in Ephesus. Yeah. So it's intensely frustrating because it's not as if we have no information, so you've got yeah. to scramble around. The, the information is there. In fact, we know quite a bit about the church in Ephesus, not only because Apollos, Paul, mm -hmm. Timothy, and John were all involved in it yeah. and with it, but also because Ignatius, 50 years after Paul founded the church, Ignatius writes an epistle to mm -hmm. that church in Ephesus from which we deduce that just as in the Gospel of, uh, rather in the Revelation of John you get a generally good impression of that church they're applauded for their mm -hmm. faithfulness yeah. but you also have a caution which is you've lost your first love just, mm -hmm. just so in Ignatius ten years after Revelation you mm -hmm. get the same picture they're doing very well they're clinging to the authority of their their bishop and their elders, they're being loyal. Mm -hmm. However, there are problems, and so they're, they're dealt with in mm -hmm. the 20 or so chapters of, of Ignatius' epistle. So it's very frustrating to yeah. think that you have to jump around the entire New Testament to get your application here when there is a lot of inf information available. So the the available. problem is, is they're wanting to reinterpret things. They're, they're not wanting to take the text at face value, that yeah. it's... A, it's about that time to those people you've got to to um, do the Humpty Dumpty yeah and and scramble it a little move yeah. around a lot no wonder yeah. you, no wonder Humpty was cracked right All right yeah so then there was a in another little sample here uh, when they're quoting uh, two verse four nevertheless I have some somewhat against thee. They make that mean the Lord's nominal people of the apostolic age. So the thee, they have it not being to the congregation, which it says it is, mm -hmm. it's a letter to the congregation. They have it a letter to what? The people who weren't faithful? They got a letter on their own? How, how does that work? Well, you turn when the world into a black and white world. But when you make yeah. it typological about an entire church age, then you're forced to do things that you wouldn't normally do. Yeah. You here is simply the same people he's just applauded on yeah. one it's for It's a what, letter for to the whole congregation. But they have problems, and those problems need to be addressed. Yeah. I, I also think, well, okay, props for what you did at the bottom of page 25. You list off a list mm -hmm. of the martyrs, that is, of the Twelve, and you tell us how they were martyred. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing about this in the New Testament itself. Mm. Actually, so you're basing your, your knowledge of how the Twelve disciples lost their lives, their martyrdom, on church tradition about these men. Yeah. So it shows, again, the selective the use of church tradition yeah. when it's convenient to make your point that look how sacrificial the apostles were, the, the twelve were that they lost, gave their lives. Mm -hmm. All of this is an attempt to motivate the people listening to Russell and reading the Finnish Mystery in 1917 yeah. to do similar exploits. So I, th I think too the frustration that we feel when we're reading this 
and knowing that as witnesses we believed that the churches were all they didn't have anything to offer no good food yeah and it's such a joke when you compare what was written even at the same time as russell what was written or written in commentaries of of uh christendom and compare it to watchtowers yeah. commentaries either now or in the past let's just flash a few of the commentaries available on on the ephesian epistles just to see what's available first is this by peter o'brien one of the finest commentaries on the book of ephesians ever published look at this hmm. and then there's marcus bart spelled the same way as the famous karl barth Mm -hmm. Bart, actually in German, Marcus Bart, two volumes on the six chapters of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. the, these are the kind of riches that are available if you just choose to go where people mm -hmm. are really being fed food in due season. And they don't do what you see here, this, this jumping around all over, the, all over yeah. Scripture. There's a lot of information about that period of church history and specifically about the mm -hmm. important church of Ephesians. So we have yeah. no excuse for, th for this. Yeah. What's our link? You did a, a video recently about Ignatius. So it's the third of your videos on Ignatius. If they had no governing body, how did the apostolic churches remain united and avoid apostasy? Good. Okay. See you soon. <laughs>